Hi, it's Professor Monty. Let's look at factoring completely using squares. All right, so the first idea is I'm gonna factor out any greatest common factor I have. I'll always start with that. That's gonna make the rest of the factoring easier if there is a greatest common factor. And then for the squares, I'm gonna either look for a squared minus b squared, the difference of squares, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And all of those I've got in this box right here. Here's the formula. If it fits one of these three patterns, it's going to be one of those three ways to factor. I've got a separate video on factoring the difference of two squares and factoring perfect square trinomials. So you may want to look back to those if you want practice with this. This is the next step. Okay, so factor complete. I've got two examples here. First thing again, look for greatest common factor. Okay. Let's see, 3 goes into all these numbers, so I'm going to factor out a 3. If it starts with a negative, I always factor out the negative as well. And then let's see, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, x squared, they'll have at least an x squared, so we'll factor that out. That's my greatest common factor. So I divide that out, it's going to leave me here. I got rid of the negative 3, so I still have an x squared. Let's see, 24 divided by 3, um, we're going to have an 8 there. So I factor out the negative, it's going to be a minus 8, right? Negative 3 times negative 8 is plus 24. And I, x squared, I still have an x. And then over here, I'm going to factor out, again, the negative, it's going to change it to a positive. And then I factor out, I've got, I've got 48, I factor out the 3, I've got 16. And I already took the x squared out. So that's what it factors into. Okay. Now, I don't just have two terms, so it can't be a squared minus b squared. So let's look for one of the perfect cube trinomials. So I look to see if this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. And they are. This is x squared. This is 4 squared. So, so far it looks good. So it works if this is a 2 times each of those. And let's see, if I put in the x and the 4, I multiply that, I get 8x. Yes, it fits this pattern a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, so it's just the first term minus the last term squared. So this is just going to be the first term x minus the last term 4 square the whole thing. And then this is just going to come straight down. I get negative 3x squared times that, and I'm done. Now, you didn't have to use perfect square trinomials to do this. You may have said, oh, it's just an x squared. Two numbers of both planets, positive 16, add to negative 8, has to be negative 4, negative 4. Yeah, you could do it that way as well. All right, next problem. Look for greatest common factor. Let's see. 2 goes into both of those. Let's see. 2 is going to leave me a 9, so then nothing else goes in there. And nothing else goes in. Just 2 goes into both of those. It's going to leave me with a 9x squared minus 4y squared. Two terms, look for the difference of two squares. Remember, if that's a plus, that's always prime. It doesn't factor, but it might be the difference of squares. So is this a perfect square, and is this a perfect square? Well, yeah, this is 3x quantity squared, and that's 2y quantity squared. Make that squared look a little bit better. So by this, it fits this pattern, so it has to be the 3x plus 2y times the 3x minus 2y. And then again, I just bring down my two. Don't forget that. That's fully factored. And I may look in each term to make sure nothing else can be factored out. And in this case, nothing can. So that's fully factored. But try these. Factor out the greatest common factor. Then look for one of the patterns. Or even if not, look to see if this is something you know how to factor some other method.